Hey everybody, the Reese here, and welcome back to more of Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edrith. Okay, episode 3, The Kidnapped Turnabout. Boom! Oh man, March 13th. Lots of questions. It's time. Don't worry, Mr. Edrith, I'll be following your every movement with my, with my binoculars. Good to hear. Now make sure you don't lose sight of me. I'm counting on you for backup. You can count on me, sir. I have to go. The kidnapper is supposed to, con to contact me soon. Who would have thought that upon my return, I'd be thrust into a kidnapping case? What? And that I would be the one who would have to make the ransom drop off. How bizarre. Oh man. Let's see. I checked that the money is all there, safe inside the suitcase. Hey! Now all I have to do is await further instructions from the kidnapper. Which I'm expecting to be transferred to my cell phone. I wonder who else is around. This is the meeting place after all. Gatewater. Welcome to Gatewaterland! Hmm? Oh, thank you. And a big hello to you. <laughs> I'm the Proto Badger. Nice to meet you. Okay. He's holding up a photo rally sign. Excuse me, but were you perhaps thinking of taking a picture with me? A picture? Of you? Sorry, but I'm not interested. Oh, that's too bad. Well, have a good day. Hello? Oh god. Who are you? You're not Ernest Amano. It sounds like the kidnapper is using some sort of voice alteration device. I'm his representative, Miles Edgeworth. Head to your service. Are you a cop? No, I'm... A prosecutor. <laughs> Alright, lots of silence. I know what you're wondering, and yes, I have brought the ransom money with me. I see. In that case, bring the money with you to the stadium. So this person intends to see if I'm being followed, huh? Please, Detective Gumshoe, I really need you to come through for me this this one time. Oh god, the blue patch is so creepy in some instances. Yeesh. Another phone call? Yeah, I figured. <laughs> I see you're here! Edward speaking. Next, come to the haunted house. And just how long do you intend to have me wander around for? That's for me to decide. You don't have much of a choice here, my friend. I suppose not. Okay, so we walk to the stadium to walk away. What? Also, I should probably know, it's fairly windy today, so I'm hoping that won't get picked up that much. But we'll see. I've arrived. Go inside. Oh, great. Ooh. I'm waiting for the suitcase to change. Oh my god, this place is creepy. Ugh. <laughs> what a dismal place. That's it, go through go through those doors. Am I being watched from somewhere? We're here. Leave the money and go. No. Oh dear. I was hoping for an exchange, but maybe I should do as they say for now and not push it. Oh god. What a creepy ass place. I couldn't catch even a glimpse of the kidnapper. Perhaps I should keep an eye on this haunted house until police backup arrives. Mind control? I oh, know. Episode 3 of the kidnapped turnabout. <laughs> oh, it's so creepy. Why the hell would Edward not have turned around by this point? Like, are you serious? 
Ah! It was a trap. What a shock. Okay, so here we go. March 13th. We don't know where. That guy betrayed. No, can't be. Then the deal... Who is that? And what are they talking about? Split police. Alright. In front of, meet up. I can't move my body. I, I fear I may faint again. What is that noise? Is it rain? Probably rain. Where am I? How long was I out? It wasn't raining like... Like it is now when I made the drop off. It is raining. Okay. This was supposed to be a simple affair. So why have I been taken hostage as well? I can only assume Detective Gumshoe lost sight of me at some point. The only reason I agreed to be the drop-off man was because of that phone, phone call. Phone call! It was from Mr. Ernest Amano, the director of the powerful Zaibatsu, the Amano group. But aside from that, I also owe him a great debt of gratitude. Okay. His w only son, Lance, has been kidnapped. I know that Lance is already in his 20s, but I guess some things you never grow out, grow out of. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Well, great, we're in a bit of a sticky situation. I can't sit around waiting for someone to come help me. I must escape somehow. <laughs> no! You've been tied to a pole! Was that you making that funny sound? Who's there? And how dare you laugh at a, gen at a gentleman's plight? Hey! New character. Who are you? Are you one of the kidnappers? A kidnapper? Me? No way. I'm not into such petty crimes. Nope, I'm after something much, much bigger. <laughs> it really just looks like Edgeworth can't help but look at chests. Because <laughs> this has been twice now. One on the air... Uh, uh, in case two, on the airplane, <laughs> he was doing the same with uh, Rhoda, and again, my god, I must wait, I must be worn out from today's ordeals. Focus, Miles. Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. Sorry about that. Okay, even in the depths of night, where no other bird dares to take flight, one alone source to shine the light of righteousness on the world's blight. And that one is me, for I am the great thief Yatagarasu. Great thief? Did she really just claim to be the Yatagarasu? Oh, but my real name is Kay Faraday. You can call me Kay. Kay? Good. Glad that's settled. <laughs> Not quite. I have a mountain of questions for you. But first, if you would be so kind as to remove these ropes. Hmm. I wonder, should I remove them? I was actually having a lot of fun watching you make those silly faces. <laughs> hey, there's no need to get all mad and icy, icy, icy glary on me, you know? This rope goes through here, and there you go. What a relief. I owe you my thanks. Eh, it's okay. You can pay me back in full later. Now then, what question should I start with? Unfortunately, I can already tell nothing is going to be easy with this cheeky girl. So, great thief. That's the only thing I can ask. Okay. You call yourself a great thief, yet are you really a thief at all? You doubt me? I get it. You think that a young lady like me couldn't possibly be such a big-time thief, right? That's not the part I have a tough time believing. I am the real genuine Yatagarasu, you know. Well, she does have the scarf. Or a scarf with it on. With the symbol of the Yatagarasu on it. I'm a pure-blooded great thief. It's a little something I inherited from my predecessor. In that case, you wouldn't mind if I arrested you then, right? What? Of course I'd mind. I haven't stolen anything yet. Seriously. I don't know how you can say such a horrible thing to your saviour. That's true. Technically, she hasn't stolen anything in front of me. Yet. Okay, so the Yatagarasu... When you say you're THE Yatagarasu, do you mean you are THE Yatagarasu? Yep. <laughs> the most righteous of the righteous, the legendary great thief. 
but the title was only recently succeeded to me. So I haven't had a chance to steal anything yet as the second Yatagarasu. I was not aware that thieves could pass down their titles like that. But don't worry, I've got some big plans in the works. Big plans, huh? They wouldn't happen to lead to a big arrest, would they? I knew it. There's just no reasoning with a prosecutor. I'm not the problem here. I'll have you know that the Yatagarazu has no interest in stealing petty things. Our trinkets. There's one thing, and only one thing, I want to steal. Only one thing. And what would that be? That's going to have to wait until we find our way out of here. Well, at least there is one thing we agree on. I'm sure I'll have, I'll have plenty of time later to learn more about you. So you never told me what your name is, Mr. Prosecutor? Ah, I guess not. I'm Mars Edgeworth. Now I remember. How can you remember something I just told you? But she sure is cheery. Alright then, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's get out of here. Oh no. It wasn't that simple. Hmm? What a guess. What a guess. What a surprise. It would seem that we are locked in from the other side. What? No way. I don't hear you. <laughs> okay, you do remember where you came in from, right? The window. Looks like that might be our only way out of this room. Whoops. Slight miscalculation. That's a good height to make an entrance from, but I can't jump that high to make an exit. Ah. Uh. Suppose we have no choice but to look around and see if we can't if we can't find another way out. So the investigation of the isolation room begins. Where's this? Hmm? Isn't this my phone? Looks like it made it through the ordeal intact. Only there was some way or there was a way for us to contact someone on the outside. But we do have a way right here. There was a cell phone here this whole time? If I'm right, Detective Gumshoe should have contacted the precinct for backup by now. Mr. Edgeworth, sir, are you okay? I was so worried, sir. I'm fine. I was knocked unconscious for a spell by the kidnapper. That's all. I'm sorry, sir. I'm such a failure. If only I hadn't lost sight of you. Detective, we don't have time for this. Have the police set up a perimeter right now? You don't have to worry about that, sir. I already got the boys working on that. But in doing that, I sort of... Uh, what's wrong, Detective? Sorry to butt in, but I'm afraid you're going to have to make, make do with me. Who is this? Shi Long Lang of Interpol. A pleasure to speak with you, Mr. Edgeworth. I've heard a great deal about you. So why exactly is an Interpol agent like yourself involved in a domestic kidnapping case? Don't sweat the details. A crime's a crime, whether it's a, on a local or a global scale. Besides, you're the one who's in a world of trouble. And why would you say that? Lang Zi says, The pack that runs together stays together. You catch my drift? You cause quite a ruckus by running blindly into a situation and then getting caught. You should have contacted the police from the very beginning. I'm sorry that this has happened because of a lapse in judgement. However, I humbly request that you please help me out of here post haste. Sorry, no can do. What? We're hunting the kidnapper now, and I haven't got any hands to spare. As I said, my pack moves as one. You're the one who wanted you're the one who wanted to go it alone, so good luck to you, Mr. Prosecutor. Oh, and once we do catch the kidnapper, rest assured we'll we'll come find you. Eventually. You you Rep Scallion! What's wrong? Did you get cut off? No, my phone ran out of power. No way. It doesn't matter anyway. We should try to get out of here through our own means. Yeah, I have a name to live up to after all. If we put our heads together, we're sure to find a way out. Yeah! Right, so... What is this? Looks like the Bad Badger. And it's looking bad as, as bad as ever. Looks like a costume head to me. I guess the Bad Badger's costume is, at the very least, a two-piece, huh? The real question is, why is the only... is only the head sitting out here on the floor? Hmm... The Bad Badger. Oh my. Bum ba bum. So 
so we got that. We also have the photo rally sign. And paint. They're holding a blue badger photo rally. You didn't know? Plus, it's not just the blue badger, it's his whole family too. Oh, I see. If you manage to snap a shot of every member of the family, you get a really posh prize. Well, the one that knocked us out was, I'm assuming... I don't actually know what they're called. Well, there's a costume head sitting over there. Why not start with a picture of that? You can't do that. That's cheating. The only... There's only one of each badger in the park, so you have to work... have to work for it. Speaking of badgers... There was one sitting against the wall in the haunted house. Seriously? But somehow, I don't think that one counts, Mr. Edgeworth. You have to take pictures of the costume ones walking around the park. Hmm. So those are the rules of this game. How quaint. Oh, there we go, the photo rally. I actually want to check that. Yeah, the one that hit us was the third one. Does it actually tell you what they are? I'm assuming you got the blue badger, pink badger, bad badger, baby badger? It's the one that's got the really weird eyes. And it's also the most yellow of the bunch. That's the one that knocked us out. Hey, there's something inside the bottom right box. Oh, I think it's a pink badger costume. Pink badger? You don't keep up with what's going on in the world, do you? In that case, you'd better study up on the whole badger clan with this. Oh, it's Proto. Proto badger. I thought it was like Kid Badger. So you got Proto Badger, Bad Badger, Blue Badger, Pink Badger. So the very first Badger. I don't know what that is. A vile criminal, something, something. An ally of justice who keeps the peace. Note her unique pink bow. So what is this thing? Think of it as a Bible of all the things you'll ever need to know about the clan. Whatever. I suppose I can keep it as a reference guide or something. A vile criminal with a gun, I think is what it says. Yep. With a gun! Suppose this means that this is where they keep all the costumes. It certainly looks that way. It's like the Badger's family home. There are eight boxes, but seven of them are empty. Which means that seven other costumes are in use right now. But aren't these Badgers the mascot mascots of the police force? Well, I heard that the police had a hand in sponsoring this theme park. Probably because the Gatewater group owes the police from all the c those cases they solve. They have all the power of the state and they use it to make a theme park. It's not just any theme park. They have a handcuff shaped double looping roller coaster. That's quite enough. I'm feeling woozy from just the thought of such a thing. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious nook and cranny. Okay. A, a suspicious nook and cranny. The fact that there's something in this one. I suppose this is a pink badger, but since it has the same design. Wait, since it doesn't it seem forced to call this one a female? You think so? I mean, just look at how long her eyelashes are. That's the only difference. Do 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 do. And the fact that she's pink. Yes, and. And her lips are red. See? Lipstick. What, she has nothing to say about the giant pink ribbon? Or is that too obvious? Oh, the key! I didn't even see that until now. What have we here? <laughs> ah, it's a key! Why do I feel like a laser-like <laughs> laser -like stare aimed right at me? D did you want to take a look? Well, don't mind if I do. Oh, I see. Yes, this is definitely a key. I'm sure it's a key to something. <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sh serious? That something is what is relevant to my interest. So is that everything? I'll I examine this again and see. I already checked this area earlier, but it never hurts to take another look. Right, so we've already found everything. If he hadn't, he would have said, like, I won't rest until I've examined every suspicious nook and granny. This is the beam I was tied to. Hmm, what's up? Oh! I was wondering if perhaps we could make it over to and out the window if we climb this. Good thinking. And if it's climbing action you need, just leave it to me. Thanks, this little, 
little hook. Looks like it might make for a good foothold. Up you go, Kay, and good luck. Count on it. Oh my god, the great thief Yatagarasu spreads her mighty wings and takes to the skies. Here I go. Wait, how is her scarf, like, fluttering in the wind? As I thought, this beam was definitely not made for climbing. There's a hook on this beam, but it's not enough of a foothold to climb with, or climb out with. Hmm. What do you mean, as I thought? I'm not your guinea pig, you know. Is there a way of, like, examining this? No, oh, I did not want to do that. No, it's this, the top. What about the paint? <laughs> I've not actually looked at these either. We got this. Man, why do they have to put the window so high up anyway? How is a thief supposed to make a daring escape? I suppose we could make our way out if we were able to climb on top of these lockers. That's pretty clever. You'd make a good thief yet, Mr. Edgeworth. So please don't ever place my name and the word thief in the same sentence again. Let's see. I wonder if I can jump and grab that off the locker here. Oh my god, really? Man, why do you have to make such ginormous lockers anyway? Even if we wanted to use these lockers, we need some sort of foothold. So if we can get to the top when we es- Oh, then we escape, if only there were some footholds. Ba 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 ba. Can I examine the paint? Maybe we can use this paint to help us escape. And what exactly do you have in mind? Well, we could paint help in really giant letters. And who, pray tell, would see these giant letters? We're inside a building. Okay, then how about we light the paint on fire and send out- <laughs> And send out coloured smoke signals. Anyone who saw it would think some crazy arsonist was about and call the cops. Hmm. Actually, that may not be all that great for me, seeing as I'm a thief and all. Let's try to find something other than this paint to you, shall we? I wonder if I can talk to Kay. There is something else. The kidnapping. Do you know where the person who kidnapped me went? Well, after they locked you up in here, it sounded like they went into the next room and started talking to someone. I feel like I heard something as well, but it's all a haze in my mind. However, I do recall that the kidnapper was talking with someone. It was just as... It was just a guess before, but I guess I really am dealing with two kidnappers here. After that, they left. It's al it almost seemed... As if they were done with you. I suppose that is the case, as my kidnappers seem like an afterthought to the one million dollars. Well, if they went into that into the next room, let's see what we can find out through this lock. Oh, there we go. That group just moved her. Oh, we can peer into the room the kidnappers were in from there. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious nook and cranny. Well, I see some chairs. Oh, right, that's the only thing I can actually look at. There's a door. There's a door on the opposite side that appears to be in the same... Oh, it appears to be the same as this one. Which would mean... I could probably assume that these two rooms are very similar in structure. I believe I may have just found our ticket out. Now, the other thing to examine is, I think... It's the ladder, I'm guessing. Oh, it's a beam. Oh, I thought he was examining the hatch. There's a beam in the next room identical to the one in this room. There's even a hook on it to hold a propped-up floor panel in place. Which reminds me... Did you find something useful, Mr. Edgeworth? Hmm, perhaps. I may have found a very handy hint to how we'll get out of here. Is that what I think it is? It looks like the kidnappers had an escape tunnel prepared just in case. That's awesome. They're like a bunch of great thieves themselves. No, they're not, because I highly doubt they made the tunnel themselves. The floor panel was removed and propped up against the beam in a very specific way. Ah, I think this building was originally built with a basement or underground area. Right, I think we're good. Oh, crap. Still not used to the control scheme. Right, so the floor panel. So the panel is held in place by a hook, the entrance to an underground room, perhaps. Yeah, there we go. Whoosh.
This hook on this beam. You know I already tried. And there's no way I can jump from this hook to the window. Come on, even you have to admit when something's just not possible. I wasn't about to suggest that again. Rather that it's here for a different purpose. Really? Like what? As you saw in the adjacent room, it's clearly for keeping a floor panel propped up. Which means that there should be a panel in this room that we can open as well. Oh, I get it. We didn't know its existence all this time because it was being hidden by this top. Alright then, let's fold this thing up and see what's underneath. As I suspected. Now this is what I call treasure. Or a treasure. So... Okay, now I can just back out entirely. There we go, examine the hatch. Wow, this must be another entrance to the secret hidden basement. A totally small treasure. The scent I wish to smell is a sweet fragrance of freedom. And what are you waiting for? Hurry up and open the hatch. Alright. This thing is locked down tight. Oh crap, I didn't actually get to read that. Ah, oh, fiddlesticks. Right. It's obviously the underground entrance and the tiny key. Yeah, I may be able to open something somewhere in this room with this key. We might be able to escape through here, but the door is locked. It seems that the costumes of the Badger family are kept in the isolation room. And there we go. Right, so boom, and a boom, and a boom. Whoosh. I believe you're up, Kay. Huh? Why me? Because we need to use the tiny key... <clears throat> the tiny key that you've taken quite a liking to. Oh, gotcha. Just leave it to me. I love the tense feeling of these moments when you're about to uncover something big. I believe the feeling of freedom would be much more satisfying right now. Or right about now. Alright, I got the secret door open, and now... <laughs> Wait! Oh dear. Are you alright, Kay? I'm fine. The ladder just slipped is all. Thank goodness she's alright. I about had a coronary. A coronary. There's a lot of really large machinery down here. What about an exit? Um, it's really dark and cramped down there, so I really doubt there's an exit. <laughs> it just keeps bopping up and down like a whack-a-mole. I can't believe that happened. You have only yourself to blame for leaping before you looked, you know. No way. I mean, how was I supposed to know that the ladder is rem removable? It looks as though it can be easily removed, but is it really safe to use? Well, I think we got our ticket out of here. Hmm, very nice. Underground ladder, and the lockers. Because it does say if we can get to the top, then we can escape. Boosh. I figured out how we will escape from this prison, Kay. Oh, so how are we going to bust out? It seems that your reckless actions were of use, after all. Are you actually praising me? Moreover, thank you for giving me an idea regarding this ladder. The underground ladder? What about it? This ladder isn't just for those who wish to go down. Oh, I see. If we use this... Yes, I believe it's long enough to reach the top of those loggers. It doesn't need to reach the top. It would need to reach halfway and you could reach up to the top. Are you serious? They're pretty tall people. I would say. And the lockers aren't even that big. I mean, to be fair, with a running jump, you would be able to reach the top. I would say, yeah. Well then, what are we waiting for? Who knows? Bum, bum. Yeah, it doesn't even reach the top. Alright, now we can get out of here. Yes, we spent entirely too much time in here. Kidnappers who held me a hostage, and a mysterious Interpol agent. This case is only getting started, and I'll be the one to bring it to a resounding end. Hmm. Whoa, what the hell? We've only been gone for like an hour. It's not been that long. The Wild Wild West area. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Wait, where do we come down from? Oh. <laughs> oh, that looks so goofy. It looks like it's it looks like it stopped raining for now. Yeah, thank goodness. You have no idea how hard it was raining earlier. Mr. Edgeworth! Come to I'm so glad to see you managed to escape, sir. I was so stressed that I thought my heart was going to give out. Detective Gumshoe, may I ask what in the world it, that is? Well, that's, um... 
O. Count off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And on. Ninety-eight, ninety-nine. Shifu. All ninety-nine members are here and accounted for, sir. Oh, bloody hell. Hey, another new character. <laughs> what the heck do you think you're doing? Counting my cubs off like that. Oh, damn. Every person is a valuable human being, you get me? And everyone has a name that their parents gave to them. No one is a two or a three. Everyone, regardless of age or rank, is number one. Got it? Oh my god. <laughs> Shifu! Shifu! You are Agent Lang, I take it. You infidel, how dare you address our Shifu so rudely? Oh, damn. Lang Zi says, a cub, who, a cub who disrespects others soon feels a dis disciplinary bite of an elder. So don't you ever forget to show the proper respect towards another person. So, Sheena? This isn't much, but please accept my card. Oh, thank you. Please accept mine in return. <laughs> You'll see that just now? That is the proper way for two people to show their respect. Keep that in mind and you'll get far in life, got it? Again. <laughs> ah, that's right. Francisca did warn me. Something about an elite Interpol agent from the Republic of Zengfa. Apparently this man has the highest su successful arrest rate in the organization. Agent Lang. Why exactly is an Interpol agent involved with this clearly domestic case? That's none of your business, Mr. Prosecutor. How is it not? I've heard a rumor or two about you. You've solved a murder that occurred during your flight home recent or oh, your flight home recently, right? Huh. But you sure took a while just to, to just to arrest one little flight attendant. How pathetic. How dare you say that about Mr. Edgeworth? Are you saying you could have solved it faster, pal? The comedic relief jumps to the aid of his master. How cliche. Look, what I'm getting at is that if I had been there, no one would have died. I would have solved the entire case and Agent Hicks would still be with us, here to death. Agent Lang knew yesterday's victim, Agent Ackby Hicks. Hicks was like a brother to me, so now I'm out to take my revenge. Agent Hicks was investigating a smuggling ring with Francisca and, and a third person. This must be the man she was talking about. In that case, you should understand how I feel, as the kidnapper is someone I know, oh, the kidnapped is someone I know. So I ask that you please allow me to participate in the investigation. Not a first. This isn't your neatly trimmed courtroom of Eden, you know. You're out in the wilderness now, Mr. Prosecutor, and no, and way out of your league. No hard feelings, but why don't you go back to your courtroom now, pretty boy? You, you dare to mock the court? I do. And I don't need the help of a filthy prosecutor. Sorry, but the truth doesn't need the likes of you to distort it today. Who uses the adjective filthy to describe a prosecutor? And why? Why do I feel such intense loathing emanating from him? Damn. Alright man, good job on the perimeter around, gate around Gatewater Land. Now just find me the kidnapper and bring the punk to me. Dismissed. Sir. Oh my god. The sound effects are great. Now then, Mr. Prosecutor, you just sit tight here and don't cause any trouble, understand? Wait. Wow, alright. Mr. Edgeworth? It's been a while since I last met someone so disagreeable. Why of all places did he show up here, and completely out of the blue like at that? Not like that. I suppose I'll have to ask Detective Gumshoe to fill me in on that. Right, that's a hint. Talk to Gummy! Great job, Detective. Sir. For losing sight of me, and the kidnapper, and allowing my investigation to be hijacked. I, sir. I look forward to your next month's salary assessment. Oh no! <laughs> but, but the case isn't lost yet, sir. I'm going to show you just how much of a man dick gumshoot can be. Shall I prepare the 21 gun salute now or later? Agent Lang. Detective, are you sure it was the precinct you called for backup? Of course, sir. I think I would know the number of my own precinct, like the back of my hand. Then why did an Interpol agent show up instead with an army of his own agents? 
That I have no idea. About five minutes after I made the call, the, that wolfman showed up out of nowhere, sir. Agent Lang definitely has an agenda. So the question is, what is he after? What's our next step, Gumju? Mr. Edgeworth, I was wondering if I may ask about one thing, sir. Yes, what is it? Um, who is that? The girl over there, I mean. I'm Mr. Edward's assistant, Kay Faraday. What? Funny, I don't recall making you my assistant, Kay. Yeah, I'm Mr. Edward's assistant. Me. It's been like that since forever. Sorry, but I just stole your supporting role. How can you say something so serious with that giant grin on your face, pal? Mr. Edgeworth, we've got a thief on our hands, sir. She stole my role, sir. I'm taking her in. <laughs> Getting her convicted and making sure she says out her sentence. Oh, come on, it'll be fun. Like musical chairs. You better stay fast on your feet. No way. I won't. I will not lose the spotlight to you, little girl. Damn. <laughs> he got real angry about that. Oh, there we go. Okay. Man, I can't calmly do anything. Wait, can't do any stealing at all with that detective around. I suppose it's not easy when there's this many members of law enforcement in the vicinity. It's alright. It's not like I'm in a hurry to steal just any old thing. Which is it? Do you plan to steal something or not? Quite the mystery, this one. Maybe I should talk with her a bit more. I like Kay. She's a really interesting character. So what are you going to do about your investigation into the kidnapping? Good question. Since Agent Lang holds the authority to, the inves to investigate this case now, this makes things a bit more complicated. Oh, come on. You can't let that stop you. I'll even lend you a hand, so let's go. But you're a self uh, self purported great thief, are you not? I don't believe I can let someone of an unlawful nature participate in an investigation. You don't like to listen, do you? I'm not just any ordinary thief, I'm the Yatagarasu. And as I said earlier, the Yatagarasu is after one and only one thing. One and only one? What is it, or what is this one and only one thing you're after? The Yatagarasu is only interested in one thing. And that is the truth. I see. It was seven years ago. There was a vigilante who threw the business... business world into a panic. Labelled mysterious and phantom-like, the Yatagarasu appeared and vanished at will. Though we still don't know much about this thief's ultimate goal, we do know the targets. Didn't he, like, expose their corrupt dealings or something? Oh yeah, I can't believe it. I actually came out with corrupt dealings. The Yatagarasu liked to find and make public evidence of corrupt dealings of all sorts. Once a target was chosen, no dramatic calling card or announcement was sent forth. Instead, the chosen corpora corporation was infiltrated without even the target noticing. Some days later, the evidence that was found was sent out to the mass media. Along with a card with the mark of a three-legged raven. Looking back, I suppose you could call what the Yatagarad uh, Yatagarasu was stealing the truth. Hmm... Could this child really be the successor to the original Yatagarasu? But that can't be, can it? <laughs> Lance! Lance! Where are you, son? What? Oh, it's Ernest! Amano. Oh my god, he's just sorting through money. What is with his ears? Mr. Amano? Oh, Miles, my boy! I'm sorry to involve you in such an affair. Just after you've returned. For you, Mr. Romano, I gladly offer my assistance. After all, I have you to thank for how well things turned out during my time abroad. If it wasn't for you, I might not have been introduced to that law office and had the chance to study the inner workings of another country's judicial system. No, no, no. Think nothing of it. As you know, Manfred and I go way back. I consider a beloved disciple of his to be like one of my own blood. If you ever want to go overseas again, you need only to ask. I can use my company's vast network to send you anywhere at any time. So, who's the old man? He is the father of the currently kidnapped Lance Amano, Ernest Amano. Now then, have you found Lance yet, Miles? Please. I miss my poor boy, dearly. I'm terribly sorry, but your son's whereabouts remain unknown, Mr. Amano. Hold on there. Then what happened to all that money? I believe the one million has been stolen and that the culprits are now on the run. What? Poor old man. Don't you have anything you could give it to cheer him up, Mr. Edgeworth? Forgive me, Mr. Romano. The kidnapping. 
I was wondering if you could please tell me the details of the kidnapping one more time. Oh, it was yesterday. A call came to the house. From the receiver came the sound of my son. Help me, Daddy. I know this is tough, but please stay with me here, Mr. Romano. You don't understand. He hasn't called me Daddy in ages. It was incredibly moving. I wish I had recorded him saying that. He definitely should have recorded that conversation. But not for the foolish sentiment sentimentalities of an old man. Lance Amano. Refresh my memory. What kind of person is Lance again? How will telling you about Lance help you get him back? Surprisingly, a lot can be deduced from a person's relationships. Oh, rela yeah, relationships and behavior. Very well then. Lance is my one and only son, and he turned 21 this year. He's very much like me when I was his age, kind and very attractive. I'm sure women simply can't keep their hands off of him. Is there anything else about him you noticed of late? Now that you mention it, I haven't been able to get in contact with our butler, Oliver. Your butler? Yes, his name is Oliver Deacon. He's been with our family for years now. He gets along so well with Lance, so I thought maybe he would know where my son is. Oliver Deacon. Mr. Romano, could you please tell me a little more about your butler, Mr. Deacon? As a butler, he's outstanding. He even serves as Lance's personal private tutor. He took a brief leave recently, but even after it was over, I haven't been able to reach him. So you still haven't spoken with him since his leave. What about his family and friends? They said they haven't seen seen him. I've tried everything I could think of, Miles. Do you think this could have something to do with Lance's kidnapping? It's possible, but I can't say anything for sure quite yet. So even the person closest to the victim has gone missing. Oliver Deacon. Sounds like one name I had better keep in mind. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe. Yes, sir. Let's begin our investigation. Even if the Interpol agent holds the authority to head the investigation, we can't allow ourselves to stand idly by twiddling our thumbs. I'm with you 100%, Mr. Edward, sir. I, Dick Gumshoe, pledge to stick by your side through thick and thin. Mr. Romano, it was my fault that the culprits escaped. Which is why, with your blessing, I vow to return Lance to you myself. Oh, I've never seen you so passionate before, Miles. Good luck to you, my boy. Alright, well, what are you waiting for? Let's do some investigating. If you think I'm losing to you, pal, forget it. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. Oh, so there's that. So, what should we examine first? Hmm. Thanks to Agent Lang, we can't leave this area. But the culprits were here until only very recently. Which means we may be able to find some clues that will tell us how they escaped. Okay, let's get looking. Hey, you there. Who, me? What are you doing goofing off in a place like this? I wasn't goofing off. I was about to help Mr. Edgeworth kick off his investigation. You're imbecile. All precinct detectives are now under Agent Lang's direct command. No way. I am not working for Wolfboy. Mr. Edgeworth, can't you do something? I'm not exactly in a position to argue, seeing as how you are a member of the police. Good, now let's go. Oh no, Gumshoe! <laughs> no! Oh, Gumshoe. Why, if I got just the job for someone of your talents? Well, that was exciting. Okay. What? Can't you tell I'm all ready to get down to, to some detective work? You should go home. Your parents must be worried about you. Oh, come on. I finally get to be your assistant and you try to ditch me? I don't recall offering you... Your, offering you the position. Hmm. Why do you have to be so difficult? Besides, it's already too late, you know. Like I said, I've already stolen the, assist, the position of assistant a while back. Heh. <laughs> You're the only one asserting that. Well, by the time anyone notices, it's already gone. That's the Yatagarasu way. You shouldn't speak so lightly of things you know nothing about. Fine, whatever, you win. Go ahead and do your, your little investigation. But the talented assistant Kay is going to tag along no matter what you say. Even if she turns out to be useless, she's not going to listen to me. Might as well surrender and let her come along for the ride. Yay! Oh, Kay is our, our assistant. She's fun. Are these footprints? Hey, there's a bunch of footprints in the mud over there. Or over here. I remember hearing rainfall out here while I was being held in there. Yep, it was just a passing rain. That's why the ground has already been has already pretty much dried up. I should be thankful. It left us with some nice, fo nice footprint samples. You know what? I bet if we followed them, we can find out where the kidnappers went. Plus, we'd be able to spot them because of their muddy shoes. I don't think it would be that easy. Why not? Look carefully. There are quite a few different sets here. 
And we don't know which ones belong to the kidnappers. Oh, that's true. And we don't know what kind of shoes they were wearing. What kind of shoes? If only we knew, we'd be able to track the kidnappers from the footprints. Hmm. Can we actually talk to these guys? Excuse me, but if you could just let me through here. Sorry, I can't let anyone through. Agent Lang's orders. I suppose I'll have to deal with this impasse for now. I've got you now, you vile criminals. I'd like... I think the kidnappers would have better sense than to try hiding in these. Oh, come on. Light up, will you? I was only joking. I don't really think the, that the criminals would be hiding here. Right in front of two officers. I certainly hope not. Hmm. Oh wait, there's a blue badger. Oh god, the music. Ba ba ba. Huh? Hey, it's the blue badger. If you get a camera. Badger, get! <laughs> I really don't understand why she is so excited over this badger hunt. Speaking of badgers, there's a person inside of there. Mr. Badger, I wonder if you might share with me what you saw. He's doing that contorted wriggling dance again. Aha! Oh my god, it's me, Kings! <laughs> You've uncovered my un undercover identity, sir. I was to remain under that head, sir. Aren't you Officer Meekins? Sir, Mike Meekins reporting for duty, sir. This man was a witness in one of the cases I just he I headed two years ago. Well, the only thing I remember about this is it about this officer is that he often spoke and acted before he thought, which gave me a great deal of headaches. I like how he only says he was in an investigation I headed up two years ago, but weirdly enough, it doesn't mention what case it was, because that was the, and it's a DLC case, not a DLC case, it was the case that was added to the DS version of Ace Attorney 1. It was incredible too, and like, eight hours long. It was a very long case. And introduced some new, new things, like blowing away fingerprint stuff and all that crap. Is he a friend of yours, Mr. Redworth? I met him in the courtroom once before. Hmm, why was he so upset when we unmasked him? Does he have something to hide? Mike Meekins! Oh my god, he still does that. Like, he's got the same animations. It's so cool. He's got the same animations, but they're from a different perspective. It's from a side, a sideways perspective as opposed to straight on, which is what I really like. Officer Meekins, why are you standing here wasting time? Sir. Because I'm not a police officer right now, sir. I'm the Blue Badger. And I'm creating memories and dreams for the kids. That's never a waste of time, sir. I have a dream to become as big as Detective Gumshoe, sir. I was patrolling the scorchingly boring beat until a little while ago, when the dispatch radio on my shoulder crackled that the kidnappers had escaped, sir. I thought maybe this was my shot at making Detective, sir. I rushed on over to join in, but when I got here, there was a sea of people already, and I couldn't spread my, tra uh, my trademark friendliness and joy onto anyone. It would seem that some people never change. The Blue Badger. So why exactly are you in that ridiculous outfit? Sir. Sir, that's because, sir, I'm here to keep the visitors in good spirits, sir. But it's also to hide the fact that I'm an officer and on the trail of a kidnapper, sir. I see, Agent Lang is very wise to employ this sort of diversionary tactics. To be handed the role of THE Blue Badger out of all the different disguises, sir. It's... it's such an honour. <laughs> Any clues? How long have you been standing here, officer? Sir? For about one little... one little hour, sir. Hmm... That's around the time I woke up from being knocked unconscious. And I've been here ever since, sir. If that's true, then it's possible Officer Meekins saw the kidnappers escaping. But, but, but however, sir, I must tell you I didn't see a thing, sir. I haven't asked you anything yet, officer. No, 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 no. But, but, I know you will, sir. He's hiding something from me. Officer Meekins, I insist that you tell me more about your recent movements. Sir, I've been playing the Blue Badger this whole time, sir, and getting into it, too. I patrolled the park all while wearing this costume. And about one hour ago, I came over here, sir. I haven't seen any suspicious-looking people this whole time, sir. 
But I did see a badger, sir. A lone blue badger. What you said just now was contradictory to the facts. How so, Mr. Edgeworth? This is what Officer Meekin's testimony contradicts. Wait. Hold the phone. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. He saw one lone badger. I'm not entirely sure. Unless it was this. Oh, he should have seen more than one. Because they should all be out in the park. Take that! Take that! Officer Meekins, let's back things up. I'd like to ask you about your last statement. So, of course, sir. If that's your wish, Mr. Prosecutor. This little patrolman will wait as long as I am commanded to wait. You said that you saw a blue badger, correct? And yet, if you take a look at this, what you saw was not supposed to happen. Oh, there's only one of each. Right, I see. No, I didn't even read that. I was just like, yeah, the, the rally. So he is the blue badger, but he saw another blue badger. This park is supposed to have only one of each badger in it at any given time. Unless he saw a different kind of badger and just didn't notice. Or just didn't specify, I suppose. Which means that as long as you are the blue badger, Miss Officer Meekins, you should not have seen another blue badger wandering the premises. <laughs> what? Sir! Then that would mean there were two blue badgers walking around, but why? A second blue badger. There's only supposed to be one blue badger in the park, but a second was spotted. Hmm. Right, okay. Can I logic? I almost pressed the wrong button again. I really just need to think. Yeah, it would, maybe. If I mix those... mix. If I put those together... Whoosh! A second blue badger that shouldn't exist. Clearly, the true identity of the person underneath is... Oh, I know, it's one of the kidnappers, right? The person wore a costume to get away. Costumed escape. The identity of the second blue badger was probably the kidnapper in disguise. Precisely. After all, the costumes that went missing from the storage area are a blue badger, a proto badger, and a bad badger. Yes, those three. Oh yeah, because the pink one wasn't missing. There was two sets of each costume, but only one set should have been missing of each. Okay, so there are three phony badgers running around in the park somewhere, huh? Interesting. So there was update. Oh no, not updated. Stolen costumes. That explains why the pink one wasn't done. Wait. Oh, there we go. We. Ah, oh, that's not going to help us. It's going to be the like the shoes with a costume. Oh, that's not good. Hmm. That is not really going to help. Now that we know that the kidnappers were wearing badger costumes. Those footprints from earlier take on a new, very significant meaning. Oh, you mean now we know which tracks belong to the kidnappers, right? Yes, more than shoe prints, we need to follow the paw prints of badgers. Okay, Mr. Edgeworth, it's time to use those footprints and go badger hunting. Hmm. There's that. If you just let me through here, can't let anyone through. Horses are painted on this garage door to complete the Wild West theme. It looks all lifelike, don't you think? Are you thinking of wrangling, or rather stealing them? If you can coax them out of there, sure. Come on, I know you can sweet talk them out. I could be holding a cube of sugar in my hand and they wouldn't budge, Kay. Where's that? So I've done that. Maybe I can talk to Meekins about it. No. Unless... Hmm... I'm just trying to think. Although we now know about the footprints, so maybe I can interact with that again? Hmm, so we're looking for footprints made by a costume. Hey, I think I found them. There are two sets here. They both do look like possible candidates. This set is walking off to the west. It just stops. I can't make heads or tails of where it's headed from here. I think we can assume it's headed towards the stadium. Hmm, I wonder where the other set leads. This one seems to be headed east. Oh, does it lead to Meekins? Oh, no it does. <laughs> huh? 
Quick, Mr. Edgeworth, I've got him! <laughs> I got one of the culprits. But no, I'm not a kidnapper, sir. <laughs> she just starts punching. Down, K. Clearly those footprints belong to Officer Meekins. But our criminals were each wearing a costume. Maybe they came over to this garage or something. That's what I would suppose. Officer Meekins, if you could step aside for a moment. We need to examine the garage. Sir, Roger Wilco, sir. Ah, oh, there we go. Now I can open it up. Let's open this shutter and see what we find. Now we'll find the kidnappers hiding inside. Ah! What? Oh god, I didn't see that. <laughs> what in the... We seem to have stumbled across a dead body. She must be in severe shock to have been the first to find it. Now then, who is this man? It's Oliver. Mr. Romano, are you saying this man is... Yes, he's my butler. How could something like this have happened? Indeed, and why was Mr. Deacon here to begin with? I better investigate this crime scene quickly before Agent Langer is in return. The kidnapper's footprints lead right to this garage. And right to a dead body. Is it possible one of the kidnappers is now a murder victim? The victim was a kidnapper. Following a kidnapper's prints led us to a body. Was the victim in a costume? Hmm. So, from my cursor... not cursory examination, I believe this man died of a fatal bullet wound. So, preliminary findings. You sure are calm for someone who just found a body. It's surprising what one can become accustomed to in the span of two days. I won't rest until I've expected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. I really wish they made it like a different dialogue because he says the same freaking thing. Although it's, it's useful because you can like look at stuff and then when you found it he won't say it anymore. This is unu an unusually shaped pendant. What is it? Is it something valuable? She seems to have regained some of her composure. It looks like a horse pendant. It's got an antique feel about it and it's really pretty. Hold on, this is made of platinum silver. Nice, it is worth something after all. Ooh, and look, something is written on the back. Oh, there's something written on the back. Colin Deveray. It's a name. Colin Deveray. But this man's name is... Oliver Deacon. We have a bullet. The wound. As long as he, that Interpol agent has control of this case, I'm not going to be able to have a real autopsy done on the victim. I'm no doctor, but let's see what I can piece together myself. Hmm, there are two gunshot wounds, one in his abdomen and one in his shoulder. So that means he was shot twice. No, I don't think so. Oh. Wait, so he was shot from below? Or above? Above or below? Wait. I think the, ab the abdominal, uh, abdominal one is an entry wound, and the one in his near his shoulder is the exit wound. So he was shot from below. If it went in his abdomen and out his shoulder. Yeah. Shot from below? Nice, I knew you could figure it out. It comes with experience, and I've seen my share of crime scenes. Speaking of experience, this crime scene seems a bit too clean for a murder where the, a bullet, where the bullet went clean through. I should make note of this oddity. So they've been updated. Okay. Hmm... So... Is this spot connected... Somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold? Victim Deacon. Shot... Shot from ABD through shoulder. Oh, abdomen. Touch check button for details. Oliver Deacon. Yeah, so it would be that. Because the pendant is... Uh, co what is it? Colin Deveray or something. You're a car. There's something not right about the name on the pendant. The victim is the Amano family butler, and his name is Oliver Deacon. But the name on the pendant is Colin Deveray. I wonder what's up with that. I don't know, but I think we've hit upon an important piece of information. Deacon's pendant jotted down. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, there we go. There's that. Yay! Lance! Lance! Where are you, sweetie? Huh? Oh! 
Excuse me, but I, but you are. <laughs> Badump. <laughs> what? I don't know what the hell that's supposed to signify. Oh, this is bad. He's really good looking. Stop it, Lauren. You can't let yourself fall for a playboy like him. You're in love with. Sounds like someone doesn't know the meaning of the phrase in a monologue, huh? Sorry to interrupt your conversation, but might you be a friend of Lance? Yes, I'm Lance's girlfriend. My name is Lauren Pops. <laughs> what? His girlfriend? Oh, it's not like that. We're more like friends and uh, we're not lovers or anything. We... Well, we haven't gotten that far yet. But I guess that's how people are going to see it. So I should just accept it. I even got this ring as a present from, La from Lance. Swoon. <laughs> what the shit? You know what she reminds me of? A cartoon character. <laughs> yep. May I inquire as to why you are here? I haven't been able to get in contact with Lance lately. And I begin to get really worried. I began to get really worried. I looked everywhere for him. And I heard about the kidnapping, so I came here. Wow, you're really strong for having made it through all this by yourself. Uh, is it true? Has Lance really been kidnapped? No one is supposed to know, but yes, it's true. No, Lance. I can't believe you've been spirited away. I wonder how you're doing right now. Looks like she's gone back to the fair maiden in love routine. Seemingly, Jesus. So, Mr. Edgeworth, where do we go from here? Well, we found a body, so we should look into the murder. Hold it! Hey! Great. Min brought me up to speed over the radio. And I have to say, you really should have called. I heard you found something very intriguing. I have nothing to hide, Agent Lang. It's exactly what you see before you. A dead body. I'll take it from here. Yeah, that guy is really dead. Hey, you're waiting for an invitation? Hurry up and detain the suspect now. Suspect? Who? What? Meekins? Officer Meekins, is it? You're coming with us. Oh no, that's his belt. Oh god, that was really weird looking. No, where his belt is, it blends in with the background so well. I thought they had like... I thought they had failed when it came to his sprite and that it was actually cut off. What? Sir, I had nothing to do with it, sir. Agent Lang, don't you think you're being a bit rash? Do you even have a good reason to suspect Officer Meekins? Huh, I leave that kind of stuff to you prosecutors. It's your job, after all. Like I said earlier, the crime scene isn't as forgiving as your precious courtroom. That's your answer. I know you like your logic and reasoning, but that sort of impractical fluff is not needed out here in the field. All you have to do is arrest suspicious person after suspicious person. That's how you eliminate crime from the streets, but that's also precisely how you unnecessarily arrest innocent people by mistake. Innocent people? Nonsense! There's no such thing as an innocent person. We've all got a blemish or two in our hearts. That's tyranny. I won't allow such a thing to go on unchecked before my eyes. Heh. <laughs> Too bad you don't call the shots around here. As I have sworn to uphold the laws of this land, I cannot allow you to take this man in. That you would arrest a man on, on false charges without even conducting an investigation. Have you no honour as a member of law enforcement? You, how dare you speak so dis dis disrespectfully of our Shifu. <laughs> Hold it. Okay. Oh my god. He left. You amuse me, Mr. Prosecutor. Langsy says every pack has its own rules. If you can play by their rules and come out on top, that is a true victory. Alright, I'll give your beloved laws a fair shake. I'll show you just how much investigating I've done. Though, uh, through my line of logic. Alright, nice. So here's his argument. Shi Long Lang's logic. I've seen a lot of bodies like the one being carted off in my time. I could say he was shot in, in a simple glance, but even you figured that much out, right? With your current gun laws, it's not exactly easy to get your hands on a gun. Not unless you're a member of law enforcement like Officer Meekins, isn't that right? Really? Wait, a member of law enforcement? Officer Meekins isn't. Yeah. I thought he was, he's not part of, well actually he's still a cop, but he's also the Blue Badger. That is your reasoning? Solid as a rock. It's based on the philosophy of detainment. Uh, what's this philosophy of detainment? You don't know? In that case, pay attention, girly. In my country, criminals have a saying, beware of the wolf. Why the wolf? Because in my language, 
Lang means wolf, and you don't mess with me or my pack. And, and as for the detainment philosophy, its father is my honorable ancestor, Lang Zi. Hmm, you'd think I'd have heard of him and his teachings if he is that famous. Huh? Oh. Lang Zi developed... Or developed it as he worked to lock criminals away thousands of years ago. To this day, the Zhengfa police still trains its recruit recruits using his philosophies. But thousands of years ago, that makes your story about as believable as a fairy tale. Hm, anything wears down and breaks over time. Do you really believe something as ancient as that can be applied to today's world? You want to put it to a test? Oh. It's rebuttal time. So I've seen a lot of bodies like the one being carted off in my time. I really hope I can just press everything. So what can you tell me about the body? <laughs> he was shot. A lot. Even without an autopsy, I have my ways. They teach you the basics of forensics along with the det with the detention philosophy. Oh, then you wouldn't mind telling me a little of what you figured out, correct? Oh, okay. Even you figured out that much. Yes, I think anyone who saw the bullet wounds would come to the same conclusion. Nurture fist. Heh, <laughs> don't pat yourself on the back yet. What's that supposed to mean? Oh god, the f- Really? Langzi says, search where the water is deepest. You have to keep your eyes on the big fish that lurks in the depths, which is the killer. Is that right? And what would you know about the killer? It's not as easy to get a gun. I find it weird that the Agent Lang doesn't have a hold it dialogue or audio bit, but he does have a not so fast audio bit. It's very strange. It would appear you've studied a little of our laws. Studied? Who needs to study what every child on any street corner already knows? It's that, that, Sheena. The Federal Firearms Restriction Act. That's it. The Federal Firearms Restriction Act. I hear it's not easy to get a gun these days. Interesting. That woman is the one in charge of keeping track on the info of the information. Ba. Ba ba. Not literally a member of law enforcement like Officer Beacon. If that's the case, there are plenty of other officers who might be potential suspects. You're not seriously going to arrest each and every one of them, are you? As if I would need to. I've already looked into everyone else here. Oh? Other than Officer Meekins, I know no one else. No one else's weapon has been fired. How did you check every single person's weapon in such a short span of time? That's because each and every one of my subordinates is extremely capable. I didn't take... It didn't take more than a few minutes to conduct the entire investigation. The power of sheer numbers. But you have yet to check Officer Meekins' sub-weapon. Uh, sub-weapon? What? <laughs> weapon, correct. Where the hell did I get some weapon from? <laughs> Pull that out, man. Thank you for reminding me. Hey, you. Show me your gun. Oh. What's wrong? Why does he look so sickly pale all of a sudden? Gun. What did you say? I can't hear you. Stop mumbling. Stop mumbling and spit it out already. Sir. I lost my gun, sir. How could you be so irresponsible? In the end, it looks like you're still the only... Su only suspect we've got. You're the one who waited here outside this, this garage to ambush and kill the victim. So you think that Officer Meekins waited here to kill the victim, do you, Lang? Lang? I think this little accusation deserves a lot more scrutiny. Officer Meekins ambushed the victim in this garage and killed him with his gun. Hell nah, he did not. Yeah, he wouldn't... I suppose he still could have. Actually, no, he couldn't, because there's no blood. There's just the gunshot wound. That's it. Objection. Yeah, man. Object. Unfortunately for you, Agent Lang, that is simply not possible. What do you mean? You've seen the crime scene for yourself. And while you were looking, did you not think... Not think to yourself that it was a little too clean? <laughs> Hiya! So you did notice that there was a little too blood. Too little blood. I can't read. 
Hey Dato, Dato, I'm not entirely sure how to say your name. Thanks for the follow, and the lemon. Appreciate it. Do you still wish to claim that Officer Meekins committed the murder here? Because this isn't the scene, uh, the crime scene. I really wish I could read. <laughs> and if it was your men who led you to think it was, then I suggest you leave this case to the police, or the local police, to set the record straight. <laughs> My god, the flashes. Not bad. I see your logic can be just as sound as mine. In that case, let me ask you this. Don't you think it's weird that officer... That officer was hanging out around here in the first place? Weird? How so? Hey you, your squad's not even supposed to be in this area, right? What were you doing neglecting your du duties and loafing around here? I... Don't you dare give me some lame excuse like, I found myself taking a walk. But sir, I really did take a walk, sir. You're a disgrace. How dare you take your pack obligation so lightly? Officer Meekins is looking extra meek. Is he hiding something? Mr. Edgeworth. Please, sir. Save me the way you did earlier. Please, sir. Officer Meekins, please give us a detailed account of what happened. Sir, not you too. <laughs> oh god, look at his eyes. Jesus. Meekins' testimony. It's true, sir. I wasn't assigned to this area, sir. I was told to check every square inch in of the main gate area, sir. I also went looking for the kidnappers while selling dreams in the blue badger mobile, sir. But I got completely caught up in my role selling dreams to the children, sir. Before I knew it, I found myself here in this area, sir. Jesus. Blue badger mobile. What is this blue badger mobile? It's what's in the garage. Yeah. It's a moving store on wheels that sells sweet dreams and merchandise, sir. Sir, the blue badger mobile is just roaming, just a roaming souvenir shop. Hmm. That thing looks tiny. Like smart car small. Sir, I swear I was chasing the kidnappers down while I was being a good dream merchant. He seems rather worked up. Even more than his usual hyperactive self. He sure seems sure of what he's saying. Can you try to calm down and lower your voice to a more reasonable level, officer? Sir. Roger, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wasn't assigned to this area, sir. So what were you doing here? Alright then, what were you assigned to? Or where were you assigned to? I was assigned to the main gate, sir. He must be in the area with the bridge and the outrageous fountain. Okay then. Why are you here in the Wild Wild West area? That's because it's because of a very deep reason, ma'am. I'm surprised he didn't say sir, to be honest. Every square inch of the main gate. So he did. Describe for me how you conducted your investigation. Yes, sir. Well, first, I made sure there were there were no suspicious looking people in the area, sir. But the only people that seemed to gather around me were little girls, sir. Well, what did you expect when you dressed like the, bl the blue badger? I thought he had no choice at that point, sir, so... I also went looking for the kidnappers while selling dreams in the Blue Badger Mobile. Hmm... So that's what's behind you. I mean, unless it's multiple. Yeah, it was parked inside... yeah, the garage. Yeah, it looks like it's not been moved. Also, it was in the main area. Oh, main, main gate area. So how could he have been in the Blue Badger Mobile? If he wasn't... I'm confused. Officer Meekins, I would appreciate if you didn't tell such transparent lies. Sir? I'm lying, sir? Yes, you are. If you were really out there selling dreams with the Blue Badger Mobile until recently, then what is it doing here inside the garage? There we go. Okay, I was right. <laughs> I never know. I like try and reason it out, but then I just sound... Like, the more I say it out loud, I, the more I feel stupid, because I'm like, no, that doesn't make sense. Actually, I just lost track, sir. Lost track of what? By the time I realised it, the Blue Badger Mobile was nowhere to be found, sir. Which would mean it was perhaps stolen. That's when I came back to this area, thinking maybe it was in the garage, sir. But that's when you found me, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. Jesus. A likely story. Who do you think is going to buy such a convenient tale, of, tale as that? What exactly is so convenient about his story? The car getting stolen is completely unbelievable, even for a cover story. 
But I think we can assume the car was used alright to move the dead body. What? You killed the victim at some distant location, Officer Meekins. And then you used the Blue Badger Mobile to transport it all the way here. Now then, you're coming with me. But it wasn't me. Sir, the killer, sir. It wasn't me, sir. Agent Lang, wait. Hmm? What do you want now? We still don't know where the real scene of the crime is. You can't say... We know all the facts of this case, let alone the truth. I told you, truth, schmooth. I couldn't care less. Our job is to catch the crook. You'll find out your precious truth after we arrest this guy and take him in. That's the job of you prosecutors, in your fancy courts with your logic. As for us, we don't have that kind of time to waste. You boorish buffoon. Uh. I think you need to leave. What? We need to get the body to autopsy and you guys are getting in the way. You... you wouldn't interfere with another one of my investigations. Hey now, let's not forget, who holds the actual authority to conduct investigations here? I'm afraid the one doing the interrupting is you, my ignorant little pretty boy. Damn. Now be a good fancy boy and get out of my sight if you don't. I'll arrest you for obstruction of justice. Damn. Well, there's that. Is that the end of... Yeah! That's the end of the first part of this case. I think I'm actually going to call it an, uh, a short session again. Mostly because this case is split into five parts. So if I do one part, which I've just done, and then next session I could do two parts, and then the, ne the session after that I can finish the case. I don't know, I just like to do it that way, to be honest. Either way, yeah! But I don't know, I like to have cases start and finish in sessions. I don't like to, essentially, I wouldn't like to finish this... Oh, right, yeah. I wouldn't like to finish this case and then start the next case in one session because it would just feel weird, for me personally. But anyway, that is going to be the end of this session. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. And until next time, take care.